One of the strangest things in the universe are black holes. They don't seem to make any sense whatsoever. Where did they come from? What occurs if you fall into one? The majority of the atoms in stars, which are incredibly massive collections, are hydrogen atoms. Stars form when a massive gas cloud collapses under their own gravity. Nuclear fusion transforms hydrogen atoms into helium at their core, liberating a massive amount of energy. Radiation from this energy pushes against gravity to maintain the delicate balance between the two forces. A star is stable enough as long as there is fusion occurring in the core. However, for stars much more massive than our Sun, they can fuse heavier elements because of the pressure and heat at the core until they get to iron. In contrast to all the previous elements, the fusion process that produces iron doesn't produce any energy. Iron builds up at the star's core until it reaches a critical level. Suddenly, the equilibrium between radiation and gravity is lost, and the core disintegrates. The star collapses in less than a second, traveling at a speed of about a quarter that of light, adding more mass to the core. As the star expires, a supernova explosion occurs, creating all the heavier elements in the universe at the exact same time. If the star is sufficiently massive, Either a neutron star is created or the entire mass of the core collapses into a black hole. The event horizon is what you would actually see if you looked at a black hole. Whatever goes beyond the event horizon in order to escape must be moving faster than light. In other words, it's not possible. We only see a black sphere which does not reflect anything. If the event horizon is the black portion of the black hole, then what is the whole portion? The singularity. We're not exactly sure what it is. A singularity may be infinitely dense, with all of its mass concentrated in one location in space, without any surface or volume, or it may be something entirely different. We simply don't know right now. It seems to be a dividing by zero error. By the way, black holes don't vacuum up objects like a vacuum. Earth's situation wouldn't change much if the Sun were replaced by a similarly large black hole, except, of course, that we would freeze to death. If you get sucked into a black hole, what would happen to you? Time moves differently around black holes. From the outside, it appears that you are slowing down as you get closer to the event horizon. And for you, time moves more slowly. You would suddenly seem to stop moving, slowly turn red, and disappear. From your vantage point, however, you can observe the rest of the universe in rapid-fire mode, which is similar to looking into the future. We currently don't know what will occur next, but we believe one of two things could occur. One, you pass away suddenly. There is only one possible direction once you cross the event horizon of a black hole because of how strongly space is curled by the object. Literally, inside the event horizon, you can only move in one direction. It feels like you're walking down a very narrow alley that is closing in on you with each step. Because a black hole's mass is so concentrated, at some points even very small distances, like a few centimeters, would mean that gravity acts on various parts of your body with millions of times more force. Your body stretches until it is an atom-wide hot stream of plasma at which point your cells begin to disintegrate. Secondly, you pass away very quickly. As soon as you cross the event horizon, a firewall would be encountered and you would immediately be terminated. Neither of these options is very appealing. Depending on the black hole's mass, your chances of dying quickly vary. A smaller black hole would suffocate you before you even reached its event horizon, as opposed to a larger, more massive black hole where you might be able to travel for some time. As a general rule, the further away from the singularity you are, the longer your lifespan. There are various sizes of black holes. There are black holes with stellar masses, some with a few times the mass of the sun, and some with the diameter of an asteroid. Then there are the extremely massive black holes, which can be found at the center of every galaxy and have been consuming matter for billions of years. The largest supermassive black hole known at this time is S50014 plus 81, 
with a mass of 40 billion times our sun. Its diameter is 236.7 billion kilometers, or 47 times the distance from the sun to Pluto. And despite how strong they are, black holes eventually disappear through a process known as Hawking radiation. We need to look at void spaces in order to comprehend how this works. Space is not actually empty. Rather, it is filled with virtual particles that are constantly arising and again destroying one another. One of the virtual particles will be drawn into the black hole. When this occurs directly on the edge of a black hole, while the other will escape and become a real particle. Thus, the black hole is shedding energy. At first, this happens incredibly slowly. But as the black hole gets smaller, it happens faster. When it reaches a large asteroid's mass, it will begin to radiate at room temperature. When it is the size of a mountain, it radiates heat that is comparable to that of our sun. In the final seconds of its existence, the black hole emits an enormous explosion with the energy of billions of nuclear bombs. However, this process is extremely slow. The largest black holes that we are aware of might take a Google year to disappear. This is so long that no one will be present to see the last black hole radiate away. Long before then, the universe will have degenerated into an uninhabitable state.